Hi everyone, today I'm going to take a look at the heavy and special weapons of the Astra Militarum and draw my experience as a former soldier to give a sense of what they might be like to use. This is a follow up to one of my other videos in which I look at the bayonet, grenade and las gun. You can check it out here. My channel covers everything Astra Militarum, so subscribe for more. Heavy weapons. It goes without saying that heavy weapons are what the name implies. Very heavy. I train extensively with the F-89 Minimi, otherwise known as the SAW. This is by no means a heavy weapon, and is often jokingly referred to as nothing more than a belt-fed rifle. It weighs 7 kilos and measures 1 meter long, and the standard ammunition allocated to a light machine gunner is 800 rounds, which weighs 11 kilos or 24 pounds. This means before you throw on your body armour, helmet, personal radio, water, rations, bayonet, spare barrel, various pieces of smaller kit including night vision goggles, your ammo and weapon already weighs 18 kilos. Now explaining what it feels like to carry so much weight is challenging to convey. Given that you wear this kit all day and all night, it is unlike pushing weights at the gym or lifting a heavy wheelbarrow whilst gardening on the weekend. The strain it places on the body is well documented. Ankles and knees really suffer, and still today both of my ankles give way a lot due to the countless times I rolled my ankles whilst I was laden with kit in the army 10 years ago. It's important to remember this point, as working with heavy weapons is a physically demanding task, and whilst the soldiers of the Imperial Guard would probably be better physically drilled than modern soldiers, it would still be really hard work like in these ginormous weapons around. So with that in mind, let's start with the autocannon. This thing is a behemoth and it fires rounds which are probably about 20mm in diameter. It uses gunfire technology, like today, to project its rounds, which means the noise this thing would make would be absolutely deafening. Something which isn't really covered in 40k novels is the sound of gunfire. I worked with the M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun, and e even with hearing protection on, standing nearby, your eyes would squint with the immense discharge propellant coming out of the barrel. The heavy bolter is a similar beast, although its technology uses an electric charge to ignite the rocket-propelled explosive rounds. This may indicate that it's a bit quieter than the autocannon. A lot of novels talk about bolters firing fist-sized rounds, and if you think how massive a fist is to be fired out, then the heavy bolter would weigh an absolute fortune. The closest thing we have to this by modern standards would be with the Mark 19 40mm grenade launcher, which weighs 35 kilos alone before you add on the tripod and box of ammunition. The effects these two weapons would have on unarmoured targets would be horrific. A 50 caliber round is known to cause horrific death blowing fist sized chunks out of people. So an auto cannon or heavy bolter with vastly bigger rounds would be turning Kale's cultists into nothing more than chunks of meat. Next the mighty LAS cannon. This is basically a LAS gun on human growth hormones and steroids with a shot of caffeine for good measure. They are called out as being a superior anti-armour weapon that can defeat most 40k armour types. Firing a beam of coherent light, you could picture this punching a perfect hole straight through armour layers, vehicle chassis, taking out vital mechanical components, killing crew and causing ammunition or fuel to explode. A bit of a surprise to me is that a single charge back is only good for one shot. This effectively makes this a one shot sniper rifle, where if you miss your armoured target, you only have precious seconds to swap the battery pack before the target strafes your ambush position with return fire. And like the auto cannon heavy bolter, transporting this weapon would ideally be done with vehicle assistance. The idea of only a two man crew manning a las cannon is woefully inadequate. Can you imagine just you and one other dragging this ginormous thing around the battlefield? So next on to the mortar and missile launcher. I won't dwell too much on the mortar aside from the fact that they're usually quite ammunition hungry. Indirect fire usually requires one to two rounds to be fired, with a forward observer giving adjustments back to the mortar team before they fire for effect. I never worked with mortars, but from what I've read, a standard fire mission is five rounds. So with each mortar round weighing about 13 kilos, a five round fire mission is 65 kilos, which is the vast majority of my body weight. Yikes. Now the missile launcher needs careful distinction. The term missile from a military point of view usually refers to a self-propelled projectile with some form of guidance system. 
The famous RPG, or Rocket Propel Grenade, is exactly that, a rocket. And once it's fired, it relies upon the skill of the shooter to find its mark, compared to a missile that would be guided to the target via its guidance system. It would be a pretty safe assumption that the missile launcher of the Imperial Guard would be a highly accurate weapon that could easily hit moving targets. Also, given my enthusiasm for the noise of these weapons, a missile launcher is typically quieter than a rocket launcher of similar size. Modern missile launchers use a small motor to project the missile out of the launcher, a safe distance from the firer, before the missile motor ignites, hence not giving the firer toasted eyebrows. A rocket launcher in comparison makes an earth-shattering bang. I fired both the M72A6 one-shot rocket launcher and the 84mm Carl Gustav. Firing the Gustav felt like you were being punched in the torso by a sack of cement, and the dangers of the backblast area was something constantly drawn into us. Special Weapons Let's now turn our attention to the squad level special weapons, with the most well known being the flamethrower. The idea of cooking hordes of cultists, orcs, or tyranids being a fantastic part of the Imperial Guard story. From a modern point of view, these haven't seen use since the Vietnam War, with widespread use being a World War II in the Pacific theatre. They served a specific tactical purpose, being able to flush out enemies from bunker systems or close jungle country. They do, however, present significant disadvantage and risk. Obviously, their short range means the tactical situation needs to develop perfectly to allow the operator to approach the target. If caught in the open, a flamer would be a bullet magnet, with the real risk of the fuel cell erupting into flames if struck by a bullet, killing the operator and those around. Also, just like the heavy weapons, they are inherently very heavy, with the American M2 flamethrower weighing 31 kilograms. Another point to consider is given that all the weight comes from the liquid fuel, it would get really annoying walking around with all this liquid swishing around on your back. The grenade launcher of the Astra Militarum takes inspiration from the M32 grenade launcher, which is essentially a ginormous revolver. My understanding is that this has seen limited adoption by militaries worldwide, with the main problem being tactical flexibility. Modern grenade launchers have an arming distance of about 25 metres which means the grenade won't ignite before this range. This is probably for the safety of the operator, however it does mean if an enemy appears close by, the operator has no real self-defense against that target. The m 203 underslung grenade launcher does however see significant use, with often two assigned to a nine-man infantry section. Firing these makes significantly less noise than rifle fire, with a high-pitched pop sound sounding like a metal pole being struck with a spanner. From memory also, these do produce a fair bit of recoil. I'd expect those used by the Astra Militarum to do the same. Right, so now onto the futuristic of the group with the melter gun to start. Its technology has a miniature fusion core that energizes hydrogen into a plasma state before being ejected via a magnetic accelerator as a bolt of superheated matter. We all know about the effectiveness of these, but a key watch out is it probably requires a tech priest understanding to maintain or repair a plasma gun. Remember that the care of a weapon usually falls down to the operator. If an infantry squad is miles away from the patrol base, gets into contact and the plasma gun fails to operate, then the operator may well have to open up the fusion core in an effort to get it firing again. Something which no doubt invites significant risk. Also, the instability of a plasma gun is well documented malfunctioning with explosive effect, leaving the operator with horrendous injuries or even death. And very lastly is the melter gun. If you play the tabletop game, you know these are anti-armor killers, doing a better job than las cannons but with significantly less range. Like the plasma gun, they use a futuristic technology that creates a sub-molecule reaction within the highly pressurized prime petrol fuel mix. This projects a superheated blast that can turn even adamantium into molten slag. From an operator point of view, the same issue with the plasma gun presents itself, being the maintenance and field repair if no tech priest is available. Also like the flamer, the heat this thing would produce would be intense after it's been fired. I failed to mention for the auto cannon heavy bolter that another byproduct of heavy weapons is the heat these things produce when being fired. Barrels become red hot giving significant risks of burns if poorly handled. And the melter gun would be no different with extreme caution required after it has been fired. 
So there you have it. My take on what it'd be like to use the heavy and special weapons of the Astra Militarum. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know with a, a like um, or in the comments. And even if you didn't enjoy the video, please let me know how I can improve for next time. Uh, so my channel covers everything Astra Militarum and I release a video every week. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.